hello and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial i would introduce you to air separation modeling in aspen isis now air separation consists of a series of processes that lead to the separation of the air mixture as you know air is a mixture of gases gases such as nitrogen oxygen and argon right so the air separation process just um, yields the separation of these gases in order for them to be purified so you are trying to um, separate them and then purify them that is the essence of the air separation process right so for the air separation process we have a couple of um, stages right involved in the air separation process which includes uh, the compression you have compression you have cooling you have purification separation and then i think storage yes product recovery right so for compression you are simply um increasing the pressure of the air feed that's basically what you are doing in compression then after compression you go to the condensation or the cooling stage where the air is cooled to the desired um, temperature uh, using mostly uh, multi-heat exchangers yes multi-heat exchangers right so we use multi-heat exchangers to cool the air then it is sent into a purif purification section where any um, unwanted um, substances or impurities are also removed the impurities may include carbon dioxide then trace trace gases and any other impurities that may be present in the air right then for the cooling the essence of the cooling is to actually um, separate water from the air so um, yeah water vapor is also present in air to an extent so um, the air is actually cooled so that any trapped water vapor can condense and then be easily separated from the air right the air feed so that's the essence of the condensation then you have the purification to remove any other unwanted impurities then you have separation so separation is actually the main um it's actually the main process or the main stage in this particular process right so this is where the separation of the um gases actually take place the separation of nitrogen oxygen and then argon in case of air mixtures that contain argon right so here you have a series of um, methods or separation techniques that can actually be used or employed in this particular stage you have the um, cryogenic distillation then you have um, pressure swing absor adsorption adsorption then you have membrane separation there are a couple of others as well you could try to look them up right so these are some of the methods that can actually be used for the separation of air right now the cryogenic distillation is actually um the um the a conventional method right for the separation of air right and this is because it produces high yields of these gases like um high uh, pure very pure um, yields of these gases right and then it's also a good method for um, separating air mixtures that contain argon right so most of the time in large scale processes the cryogenic distillation is actually used for um, the separation of air right so though these other methods can also be used right then after the separation has been done the next is product recovery so after you have separated your gases um, the next is to actually collect them and then store them under um, the desired conditions that you want them to be stored so uh, most mo they are mostly stored under um, very high pressure uh, yeah very 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 high pressure and then also low temperature as well right that's though that's for the um, cryogenic distillation case right so if you use cryogenic distillation which occurs from about minus 150 degrees celsius yeah so if you use that case then 
the products will be stored at very very um, low temperature very low temperature and very high pressure right up to up to about 100 bar or even more right so basically that's just um, the introduction to air separation so um, I model the process yes for this so this is it right so this is a simple air separation model okay so this is like the overview so I can now zoom in so you can view it properly so we have um, yeah let me just zoom in okay so that's too much I think this is okay so uh, from here we have the air so the air is fed into the process the air is fed into the process you have air with about um, 79 percent nitrogen okay so let me just yeah so this is the composition of the air feed this is the composition of the air feed about 78 percent nitrogen then oxygen of um yeah roughly 21 percent then um uh about um 0 0.9 percent right am i right yes 0 0.9 percent um, argon right so this is the um composition of the feed and then these are the properties as well right so it enters at atmospheric conditions it enters the process at atmospheric conditions then you have it fed into a compressor right it's fed into a compressor as we already highlighted the first stage is compression so it's fed into the main compressor then it's now sent into a cooler a pre-cooler actually so it's sent into a pre-cooler before it's now sent into the um multi the first multi-pass heat exchanger right it's fed into the first uh, multi-pass heat exchanger then afterward it is now sent into um two separate compression stages so you have a compression for the um yeah for the um, low pressure um, column and then you have a compression for the high pressure column so this is the um, low pressure um, column compressor right so what is compressed here is actually sent into a a yeah a low pressure distillation column then you have a lot of heat exchange occurring in this um, multi-pass heat exchangers so after the whole um, compression here and then the cooling the first um, stage of the distillation in this case um, we are making use of the cryogenic uh, distillation that's what is being used in this particular in this particular model right that's the separation technique that is being used in this model the cryogenic distillation so um, yeah so you see that the feed to this distillation column is about is at about minus 176 uh, degrees Celsius right so this is a um, cryogenic temperature so you can see it minus 176 degrees Celsius we can also check the second one okay the second one is up at about minus 170 degrees Celsius right so those are the um, feed to this um, temperature feed to this particular column so this column the essence of this column is to actually um, separate nitrogen from the air feed so you have nitrogen coming out from the top and then you have um, argon and oxygen a mixture of argon and oxygen coming out from the bottom right so you can also confirm that from the um, from the worksheet yes so um let me see so the outlet is let me see the outlet of this okay the outlet is 19 um let me see or oh, let's check it from outside i think that's better so the outlet from this is 19 okay let me see yes so as you can see from here you can see from here that the nitrogen comes out from the top of the column so you have about zero point 
you have about 0 0.999 nitrogen then let's check the bottom as well so the bottom is a mixture of okay it also has some nitrogen in it as well right so it has a mixture of um, nitrogen oxygen and argon right so after this um, let me see <clears throat> yes so this um, is um, further cooled and then sent into this um, second column right so it is also it is sent into this second column this um, bottom which also has some actually has some um, nitrogen in it as well right it also has some nitrogen it is sent into this um, um, second column after some heat exchange has taken place here it is sent into this low pressure column so this is a high pressure column it occurs at about um, 500 degree uh, 500 kPa right which is about five bar yeah which is about five bar 5.3 bar then you have the bottom as 5.49 bar so this is your high pressure column then this bottom of the high pressure column is sent into this low pressure column which is also a cryogenic column as well so what this column does is that it further separates the nitrogen from the um, oxygen and argon so if you check this column right here um okay let's check it with let's use the top uh, product so the top product is 46 now if you check it you see that also the um the uh it contains majorly um, nitrogen as you can see from the mass fraction you have 0 0.999 nitrogen and then a little bit of argon in it then you can now see that the bottom the bottom now consists of just um, oxygen and argon right so this oxygen and argon is now sent into a another column right where oxygen is subsequently separated from argon right so you have oxygen um you have oxygen coming out from the bottom and then argon coming out from the top in this case the nitrogen that comes out from the top of the low pressure column is um okay yes it's in um yeah so that's it so it's in um it's in liquid phase as well yes that's what i wanted to say yes because the vapor fraction here is zero okay so now um the argon is now separated from the oxygen as you can see here um, yes, basically, and if you check the flow sheets, you can see the you can see the compositions here. This is the composition of the oxygen, and the, then the composition of the argon, right? So this um, this um, column separates argon from oxygen with up to um, ninety nine percent purity, right? For both of them, right? So ninety nine percent purity is achieved for both the argon and the, the oxygen stream as you can see then um, after that both of them are subsequently pumped right to increase the pressure to increase their pressure before they are sent into the storage tank now the um, cryogenic distillation occurs it occurs at a pressure that is not so high right the pressure that it occurs is not so high compared to the storage pressure of these gases uh, the storage pressures are very high so for example the um, argon is pressurized to about 50 bar i think yes it's pressurized to about 50 bar before it is sent into the argon tank then this is pressurized to about 100 bar yes 100 bar before it's sent into the um into the um oxygen tank right then for the nitrogen for the nitrogen nitrogen is passed through the top of this um, low pressure column and then it also passes through the um, multi heat exchangers before it comes out and then it is also um, compressed and um, it is compressed and um, stored right so it comes out as vapor 
yes it comes out as vapor even though it's liquid here uh yeah it's in liquid phase here when it goes through this um it goes through this um heat exchangers it comes out in vapor phase let me see this one yes it comes out in vapor phase because the temperature increases right it gets warmer as it passes through the whole heat exchange multi heat exchange process and it comes out in vapor phase so i use a compressor to actually pressurize it to about 100 bar as well so about 100 bar before it is now sent into a cooler and then it is now stored in the nitrogen tank so basically that is how this um, model works right so that's how i actually modeled this process yes yes so that's it so um let me zoom in so you can have a bigger picture of it so this is how it is basically so that's it so if you have um questions about this um air separation if you have questions about air separation or air separation modeling using isis you can let me know in the comment section like this video and um, share with your friends also subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet thank you for joining me in this particular tutorial do have a good day